This is section 3.2, part B. We're now going to look at graphing some rational functions that aren't necessarily in the form where we can see the shifts easily. Graphing rational functions in general is a fairly complex process. To do it without a calculator and do it well, we need a lot of um, more sophisticated math than we really have available to us yet. Uh, if you take more math classes, which I hope you will, you'll learn more about this in the next couple of courses that you take. For now, however, we can say a couple of things. If I have a function f of x, p of x over q of x, which I'm going to assume is in its simplified form. We really have already talked a bit about how to find those vertical asymptotes. Remember back on these last couple of examples? We had commented that the vertical asymptote and the domain were always the same. Right? The vertical asymptote is essentially an x value that isn't part of the domain. So here, I know that x would not be able to be negative 2. That would make the denominator 0. And negative 2 is my vertical asymptote and the value that I ex exclude from the domain. Over here, if x were 1, that would make the denominator 0. x equals 1 is the vertical asymptote. And it's also the value excluded from the domain. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, well, I just realized I wrote a negative one here instead of a positive one. You might want to go back and fix that in your, your notes as well. The vertical asymptote was x equals 1. That means the domain is x is not equal to 1. Sorry about that. So, it's the places that are excluded from the domain that end up giving us the vertical asymptotes. If I say that more generally here then, Vertical asymptotes occur at x values that make the denominator 0. That is, places where q of x equals 0. So those aren't too bad to find. It's really just like finding domain all over again, which we have done already. The horizontal asymptotes are a bit more difficult to explain exactly why things are happening the way they are, again, with the math we have so far. So in this, this case, I'm going to give you sort of a little, um, I guess, a little checklist in a way of things to test for to see what horizontal asymptotes you're going to find. The horizontal asymptotes all have to do with the relationship between the degrees of P and Q, the degrees on the top and bottom. And the first case is when the degree of P is less than the degree of Q. So the degree on the top is smaller than the degree on the bottom. In that case, the x-axis, or y equals 0, will be a horizontal asymptote. The second possibility is that the degrees of the top and the bottom are the same. So this is the case where degree of P is equal to degree of Q. And in that case, what you end up doing to find the horizontal asymptote is using the ratio of the leading coefficients. I know that's a lot of mathy words, and we'll review what they all mean in the context of a couple of examples here in a few minutes. But for now, I'm going to say the horizontal asymptote is at y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients.
The third and last case is what happens if the degree on the top is bigger than the degree on the bottom. So the degree of P is larger than the degree of Q. And when that happens, there actually are no horizontal asymptotes. So everything depends on the degree of the top and bottom when we're thinking horizontal asymptotes. Let's look at a few examples of problems like these. In number one, we've got our function here. And I'll begin by saying, let's look for the vertical asymptote. I know vertical asymptotes correspond with the domain. So I look at where the denominator, or the Q, is 0. Now I just want to say a word here. If I was truly finding domain, I would say this is not equal to 0. But the vertical asymptotes occur where this is equal to 0. So subtle difference, but just in your thinking. Are you looking for domain that can't be zero? Or are you finding the asymptotes, which actually is exactly the points that do make the denominator zero? All right, um, let's see. I want to factor this, and I think I can. We're looking at a sum of one. Product would be negative 30. So positive 6, negative 5. Break up that middle term, and then factor by grouping. I'm going to factor out an x, makes that 5x plus 6, and also a negative 1, which also makes it 5x plus 6. And I factor out the common binomial, 5x plus 6, giving me x minus 1. So on this one, we'd have 5x equals negative 6, or x is negative 6 fifths. And over here, we'd have x equals 1. Those are the equations of my two vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in right now. I'll have a vertical asymptote at x equal 1. And another one at x equal negative 6 fifths, so just past negative 1. And the problem said draw and label all asymptotes, so this is x equals 1, this is x equals negative 6 fifths. All right, what about the horizontal asymptotes? Keep in mind, we always refer to P as the top function, Q as the bottom when we talk about degrees here. And in this case, the degree of P is 1. The degree of Q is 2. So definitely the smaller degree is on the top. Degree of P is less than degree of Q. That was this first case, degree P less than degree Q, so the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, or y equals 0. And once again, I'm just going to draw that in. y equals 0, the x-axis. It's my horizontal asymptote. Label it there. There we go. All right. At this stage, 
the rest of the problem is we're just going to go ahead and finish in the calculator. Again, um, the math skills we have right now are great for beginning to locate the asymptotes, but we'll need more to actually predict the rest of what this would look like other than just plotting points, which the calculator does very well. So I'm going to put this into my y equals. And let's see, this graph goes from negative 8 to 8, so maybe I'll go ahead and put that same window in. I can always adjust later if I don't like it. All right, and it's a little bit tough to see what's going on. This is very common with rational functions when they have asymptotes. Even the calculator gets a little bit confused because the calculator operates simply by trying to connect the dots. And it'll try connecting dots from one side of an asymptote to the other, even when it, sh when it shouldn't. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm starting to see a little bit, but let's change and make this window a bit smaller. My asymptotes occur pretty close together, um, negative 1.2 and positive 1. So maybe I'll just go from negative 3 to 3 on the x values. That'll certainly cover the asymptotes. And I'm going to try the same thing on the y's. All right. I now get a function that's a lot easier to see what's going on. I can see here at negative 1.2, that vertical asymptote would come right in here. And my function goes down on the left side of it. So coming over to my graph, here I am close to the horizontal asymptote. And on the left side of this first vertical asymptote, I go down. In between the asymptotes, I have one of these little, I don't know, almost zigzaggy kind of things. It goes up on this side and comes down on the right side. So I'll kind of just draw what I see. something like that in between the asymptotes. And then all the way over here on the right, we go up towards positive infinity here, and then just come down close to the horizontal asymptote again. So a combination of finding asymptotes by hand, but then using the calculator to help us see what the graph looks like is what we're going for here. Let's try another one. Here's my function. Beginning by looking for my vertical asymptotes, I know they occur when the denominator is 0. Exactly the same places where I would have to throw values out of the domain. Let's see, this one's a quicker factoring one. I know the x squared is x times x. And I'm looking for a sum of 2, product of negative, negative 8, say positive 4 and negative 2. So my first vertical asymptote will be at x equal negative 4, and my second one will be at x equal positive 2. horizontal asymptotes. In this particular case, I'm looking at a degree of 2 on the top, but also a degree of 2 on the bottom. So again, if I call this P and if I call this Q, this time I've got the degree of P equaling the degree of Q. And that's the second case, when the degrees are equal, 
to get the horizontal asymptote, we use the ratio of the leading coefficients. So y equals, my leading coefficients here would be the 2. And then in the bottom, of course, it would really just be a 1 x squared. So y equals 2 over 1, or just y equals 2. So just again, a reminder, leading coefficients, the coefficients of the highest powered terms. All right, y equals 2, then, is a horizontal asymptote. So, and once again, this is as far as I'm asking you to be able to do things by hand. From here on, to get a full picture, we're going to use the calculator. And I probably left the window in from last time. I'm going to need to change that. We've got an asymptote all the way over here at negative 4, so I definitely need to go further than x equals negative 3. Let's go ahead and try the negative 8 to 8 again, which is exactly what I've got on your paper. All right, and this time, actually, I was able to see it a little better um, with a larger window like this. The left side, we can see, is going to be up here in the upper left corner. So I'll translate that over here. I'd be close to my asymptote, and then go up close to the vertical asymptote. In between the vertical asymptotes, I've got this sort of an upside down U. It's a little lopsided, but that's OK. We're coming down here close to the vertical asymptote at negative 4. And the other side, we're coming down over here next to the other vertical asymptote. Finally, on the right-hand side, we're in that upper right corner. So once again, I'll just basically sketch what I see. And there we go. All right, we've got one more graph for rational functions here in number 3. And I will begin again by looking for vertical asymptotes. The denominator can't be equal to 0. If it is, it will result in a vertical asymptote. I can factor that, x plus 2, x minus 2. So one of my vertical asymptotes will be at x equal negative 2, and the other one's going to be at x equal positive 2. So I'm going to draw those on there right away. I was using dotted lines, you'll notice, for Asymptotes, I know we've done this in the past, but again, just worth a mention. They're not actual lines on the graph. They're more like guidelines that you use to draw the graph. Horizontal asymptotes. If I think again of the top as being the polynomial P and the bottom as being Q, this time the degree of P, 3, is larger than the degree of Q, which is only 2. Because of that, this is case 3, and I have no horizontal asymptotes. So I've got everything I can get by hand as far as asymptotes are concerned. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the calculator so we can see what the graph looks like to finish off.
And I've still got that negative 8 to 8, and I'll leave it for now. All right, once again, we can see pretty well. Um, notice that this time, instead of leveling off, the end behavior on the left side goes down towards negative infinity. That would be expected. It shouldn't level off since we didn't have a horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to begin by sketching that side. In between, I've again got kind of a lopsided upside down U there. I will more or less sketch what I see again. Looks like it goes slightly above the x-axis, so I'll draw it like that. And on the right-hand side, again, I can see the behavior going up along the vertical asymptote here. But then, instead of approaching any kind of a horizontal asymptote, it goes on off to positive infinity. So once you've identified the asymptotes by hand, using the calculator and sort of sketching what you see is fine to complete the rest of the graph. All right, that brings us to the end of 3.2.